Well, guys, we made it to the uh, last Friday before we have any real college football. A week from today, we will have the McKinney brothers in studio. It's going to be awesome. The final countdown, we'll actually be getting ready for that Sam Houston State game. It is Tech Sags Rewind. So happy to have you here uh, joining us on YouTube or wherever you're watching this. On the show today, episode 2853, OB on why AM can win the SEC. I'd like to hear from you down below. Why do you think AM can win the SEC? Uh, give us your reasons. Comment below. You also have Art Garcia, who's an Aggie, who covers AM for Sports Illustrated. He does good stuff. 22 and 22. We got the number one, ladies and gentlemen. Devon A. Chain, our number one player, Heisman S. kind of guy. He's going to have Heisman S. moments, and we expect him to get into that conversation throughout the season here. And then Billy Lucci on the uh, quarterback speculation and everything else happening with uh, Texas A&M and, of course, all the haters out there. It is Texas Rewind. Thank you so much. Here it comes. I'll give you some reasons. All right, first of all, uh, improved quarterback play. They beat Alabama last year with a struggling quarterback. He had a really good game, but um, but improved quarterback play. Mm-hmm. Uh, that That's a reason. Um, I think the uh, more explosive offense – uh, that they're projected to have, and I think they will. I think that's a reason. Um, let me let me pause you on that one. So uh, more explosive offense, which I 100% agree with. Does that mean they have the ability to do it, or are, does that mean they're going to rely on explosive offense? I don't think they rely on anything. I think they try to be uh, – I know as coach speak, it's kind of boring. They try to be balanced, but they want to have that explosive element where uh, when you say rely, does that mean that you're going to be throwing downfield 20 long. yards every no. play? No, I don't think it's going to be like that. Even though I think any time you just turn the ball and hand the ball to Devon A. Chain, that's potentially an explosive play. Mm-hmm. So I think they're more explosive. I think they're strong. I think they're going to be strong in both lines. And I think that's a prerequisite to win the SEC. Yep. You have to be strong on the offensive and defensive line. So I think they're going to be. Um, and then number four is that they know they can beat Alabama. They've done it. I think sometimes you go over there afraid or thinking, well, gosh, if we play as close to perfect as possible and maybe they aren't going to be into it 100% or maybe they'll make mistakes and here and there and then maybe we can get into the fourth quarter and then if we get a break maybe we can pull it out at the end I think a lot of teams go in with that attitude and I don't think that's the way this I think these guys are going to say well let's go let's uh, you know you want to you want to go let's dance let's go right I don't think there's they're, they're afraid just where are you on your college football excited skill I think like most of us it's been a long what, seven, eight months waiting for college football, waiting for football in general. Um, And as early as you start seeing top 25s pop out and all American teams, it just sort of whets that appetite. So, so I'm ready. It seems like uh, every year we're waiting and then it just sneaks up on you and then it's over before you know it. So uh, it should be a great, it should be a great season. And I'm really looking forward to what's going to happen down in the College station. Well, hope to see you at a game here this year. How do you think QB one is going to shake out for the Aggies this year? You know that that to me is it's got to be a concern. Um, you would hope at this point that somebody would have elevated or sort of distanced from the competition. I, I mean, I happen to think it's going to be Haynes King. I think most people probably feel the same way. Um, and, and maybe Jimbo's keeping it close to the vest, but you know, you're not opening up with a power five team. You're opening up with Sam Houston. So I, I don't understand why you would keep that under wraps if you already know. And the, if you don't know, then I think there's an issue and, and you probably, you know, the adage, if you have two quarterbacks, you don't have one. Um, I would like to think one of those guys has, has, uh, distanced himself in practice, but. You know, it seems like nobody's letting on. So that that's a little bit of a concern for me at this point. All right, this is where I'll I'll say that I'm not that worried about it, and, and I'll tell you why. LSU hasn't named their starting quarterback. Ole Miss hasn't named their starting quarterback. Auburn hasn't named their start, starting quarterback. And I, and I think there's another one, too, that has not in the SEC alone, right? Like, there's several around the country. Uh, we're in a new world of college football where people can transfer tomorrow, right? Uh, I think yep. Arkansas has lost a couple of guys here in the last week, right? Right before the season. No scholarship, poof. I think you have to be very delicate in today's college football world, especially with a talented quarterback room, to make sure that you are doing the best you can to keep those guys on campus and do best for them as well. Yeah, I understand that. But as soon as that decision's made, the guys are going to transfer. Um, you know, I, I know that we're all wondering about Wagman, and he's, you know, Jimbo said he's the best quarterback recruit in the country. And that includes people like 
you know, Quinn Ewers last year. You know, if he looks at two or three years of not playing, I mean, do you expect him to stay? I, I mean, I, I don't know. I think I think it's great that guys can transfer. I think it's great that they're immediately eligible. I think the new rules with four games and you can hold on to your freshman season, I think all of those things are positive. Um, I just don't know if if holding back a decision for a week really is going to change somebody's mind, whether it comes, you know, to the next four years of his life. So I get your point and I understand that, you know, college football, you know, athletic sports in general are very secretive these days. You know, you don't want to give away information on injuries. You, there's, there's so many things that you want to keep under, under the rug, but if a guy's going to transfer, he's going to transfer. Billy, you know it. Number one, Devon A. Chain, um, that dude is on another level, man. And uh, yeah. I've, I've been trying to get, I want him to be on that national conversation now. I don't want to have to wait, but he's going to have to wait a little bit. That's fine. I mean, look at how these Heisman races have gone over the years. It's, there's always, I mean, we were just talking about Jameis. The year before, there's a guy named Johnny Manziel. The year before yeah. that, there's a guy named RG3. Uh, it always seems to kind of go that way. You know, Bryce Young, first year as a starter, Heisman Trophy. There, it, it's never, there's always going to be somebody infiltrating that that either threatens to win it or it seems like lately does win it. A-Chain fits that criteria perfectly, really. The only the only difference is typically it's like it's become a pretty quarterback heavy award, uh, but outside of that, he fits the criteria. If you think about it, I mean, here's a guy, he's electric on the field. Uh, he's got he's got a resume that tells you his number should really jump this year significantly. If you just look at it, you know, with Isaiah Spiller moving on to the NFL. A chain. I, I heard these guys yesterday on, on ESPN. They're like raving about these backs in, in Heisman contention. And they talked about, you know, they talked about Jameer Gibbs. And we, I know you guys have made that direct comparison a lot. Um, and they're going off, man, I just hear he looks so good at Alabama. He looks so good. W what, are you guys not asking how Devon A chain looks at AM? He's had an incredible camp. Like you can't talk to anyone over there that would that would say like this dude's he's un, he's unbelievable every day as a runner as a pass catcher lining him up at receiver line him up in the backfield run the option hand him the ball conventionally between the tackles gets to the second level he's gone you can't and if you watch his highlights even against Alabama right. Here the guy makes an incredible over-the-shoulder catch that most running backs can't make. If the throw doesn't lead him out of bounds, that's about a 60, 60 70 yard house call against the Tide. The, the kickoff return that really proved to be an absolute game changer, and it was just he – just, he made Alabama's coverage units look inept and slow. Remember when we watched Alabama's coverage units like almost kill Speedy Noyle yeah. with that helmet-to-helmet? -helmet? Now you got a guy in A-chain – that's making Alabama's coverage units look inept. Just they can't touch him going down the field. Um, if you watch the dude's highlights over the last two years, not only will you see some incredible plays turned in by number six, you go back, you know, obviously the MVP of an Orange Bowl already on his resume. Uh, but you go back and you watch, if you watch every touch he's got, you go, oh, he averaged seven yards of carry. They were bragging about some guy as a Heisman contender because he averaged six, he's six yards per carry last year. It's like A-Chain averaged seven, and it was like, to me, a quiet seven. You mentioned quarterback. You think we find out Monday? Yeah. Yeah, not before? You might, but it won't be. I don't think it'll be a formal announcement of any kind. I mean, I'll, I'll keep checking and see. I, I know how practice went yesterday, and I still think, I still think Haynes, I've been saying that. I mean, Gradually, you're seeing now everybody fall into line on that. Um, all the people that were saying it wasn't going to be throughout the offseason. Yeah, everybody, yeah. Um, I still think it is. Uh, I don't know that uh, – I haven't confirmed if those guys have been told anything. I don't, I don't believe so. But just based on what I heard yesterday, I still feel that way. So, we'll for, see. for those asking why wait, what do you say to that? 
I don't I don't think it matters. Like yeah. Jimbo knows this is what look, coaches aren't always right. And we can't ever fall into that trap where it's like, well, the coach is always right. But they're also not always wrong. And some of them, this is not a thing that, that a coach that's been doing it as long as Jimbo Fisher is going to get wrong. This is like basic level stuff for him to know mm -hmm. how long ahead of a first game he needs to quote unquote name a starting quarterback. He's done it. God knows how many times Auburn, LSU, Florida State as an assistant, Florida yeah. State as a head coach, Texas A&M, countless QB battles, as many as probably anybody in this, in this sport coaching right now. He knows the time frame. He knows what he needs to do with this. So I'm, that, that is one thing. Coaches can be wrong and Jimbo can be wrong. He's not wrong about this because whatever he thinks is, is – the way to do it, it is, is fine. And it's, it's, he totally understands like, Hey, I need to, and it might be for him. They just need a full game week. And he might be, let's say it's, let's say it was, it was Haynes, right? He might have a very specific method in which he's been increasing his first team reps mm -hmm. where it's not just overnight. Oh, look, he's getting all the first team reps, but it might just be going up a little bit for the last, half a dozen practices yeah. to, you know, I don't know that, but I'm just saying like, you don't know what his thinking is in that, but I think he knows exactly. And by the way, if it is Haynes and let's say, I don't know, but let's say it's been 40, 40, 20 Haynes, Max Connor with like the ones getting about roughly just a little less than half of the first team reps, a guy like Haynes and maybe for the last week or so, maybe he's gotten half. Maybe it's been 50, 35, 15. If you're getting half the first team reps and then you go into game week and then you start getting them all, a guy that's been in your system three years and has I mean, won fine. a starting job before, Jimbo knows that's fine. That's not, that's not an issue there. I got into this thing where I like point. I don't know why. I like Shooter McGavin, just pointing. So every time I point, you got to put a comment. That's been five points right there. You got to have five comments on the show. All right, uh, thank you so much for watching. All I need you to do now is like, comment, subscribe, tell your friends about it, share it, and uh, do it again. Thank you so much. We'll see you. Okay, I'm holding back the, the pointing. We'll see you on Monday.